Hi, welcome to TDTV. I'm Catherine. And I'm Sarah. Happy Valentine's Day, Catherine. Thanks, Sarah. Are you celebrating today? Well, I'm wearing pink yesterday. I'm wearing I red, wore but pink. that was unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. So we were talking about before our favorite Valentine's Day mm -hmm. traditions. Yes. And something I remember doing in elementary school was decorating boxes to uh, pass out Valentine's to everybody to like, collect your Valentine's in elementary school. Uh, one time I made mine Spongebob themed, so I thought that was pertinent. <laughs> but you said you didn't, what, what kind of stuff did you do as a kid? I don't really remember having any traditions like that. I just assume we probably just made cards for our parents, like, dear mommy, I love you so much, happy <laughs> Valentine's, you know, from Catherine. Like, I think that's the sort of thing that I would do, and, like, draw some god-awful picture because I just cannot draw to save <laughs> my life. So that's probably what I remember doing. And uh, chocolates, uh, I, I do remember some teachers, if they were nice, would bring in chocolates Ooh. on Valentine's Day. But yes, not really many traditions for Valentine's in the UK. It's definitely a big deal here, which I love. But. Yeah. Well, I think that we should bring that back in college and we should all have a day where we make little boxes and give each other Valentine's. But until that day, we will see you later. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> Welcome to TUTV, I'm Joe McCurdy. And I'm David Stump. We have some stories for you today, so let's head right in. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention released a report on Tuesday highlighting the mental health challenges facing American teenagers, sp specifically American teenage girls. The report found that teenage girls were more likely to report feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and su suicide suicidal ideation compared to boys. Additionally, girls were more likely to experience physical or sexual dating violence than boys which is likely a large contributing factor to, according to the report. The report states that, quote, nearly 10% of high school girls reported experiencing physical dating violence in the past 12 months, compared to 4.4% of boys. 4% of girls reported experiencing sexual dating violence, compared to 1.3% of boys, end quote. The COVID-19 pandemic was also identified as a contributing factor to the increase of men in mental health challenges among all teenagers, regardless of sex. The report calls increased resources and support to address these challenges. China has accused the United States of flying balloons carrying sensors and cameras through its airspace, which were, which were reportedly launched by a U.S. military contractor from South Korea, posing a potential threat to China's security amid ongoing tensions between the two countries over various issues, according to a report by the Wall Street Journal on February 13, 2023. These reports come soon after the United States reported the shootdown of a balloon by an F-22 a week ago, Saturday. Most recently, there were third and fourth objects that were both shot, do shot down over Canada on Saturday. No other information about this object has been released, and no U.S. offices have yet commented on the allegations. Powerful earthquakes struck eastern Turkey last Sunday evening, causing widespread damage and leaving thousands dead and hundreds of thousands injured. The magnitude 7.8 earthquake occurred in eastern Turkish province of Van and was felt across the border in Syria. Ch Chef Jose Andreas, a world-renowned cook from Turkey, said in an interview when asked about his loved ones who live in Syria and Turkey that, quote, they don't go into their homes, even if they were safe, because they are afraid that the house will collapse above them. So many of, pe so many of people are outside living in tents or living in their cars, end quote. Local authorities and rescue teams are still responding to the disaster with reports of significant damages to buildings and infrastructure in affected areas. An Oklahoma lawmaker representing Tulsans is urging lawmakers to consider gun safety as the state's legislative session continues. According to News Channel 8, Democratic Representative Monroe Nichols supports Second Amendment rights and the Constitution, but prioritizes safety in discussions regarding potential gun legislation. 
Nichols said in an interview that, quote, we have to come together if we really care about gun ownership to make sure that it's done the safest way possible, end quote. House Bill 2047 would impose a three-day waiting period to obtain a purchased gun. On Monday, the stock market rebounded as investors anticipated a crucial inflation report scheduled for Tuesday after the S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite recorded their worst weekly losses in nearly two months. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has remained relatively stable, according to an article from CNBC. The market's performance was likely influenced by factors such as the Omicron variant, which continues to impact supply chains and the labor market, and concerns about rising interest rates. Despite the mixed performance, some sectors, such as technology and communication services, showed signs of strength. The CNBC article also reported on individual companies, such as Twitter, whose stock price fell after negative earnings report, and General Electric, whose stock rose after positive earnings report. So, it's been such a tragedy to see what's going on in Turkey and Syria right mm -hmm. now. All our thoughts and prayers are to the families that have been affected. Um, just awful, awful news. Exactly, um, yeah. But, but it's, been, it's been great to see mm -hmm. uh, the level of support um, here in the States, you know, we talk about influencers, yeah. um, you know, they're good for some things, they're not good for a lot of things, but they've, the things, the people that I've seen have raised mm -hmm. millions and millions of dollars yeah. for the support uh, in, in rebuilding, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely, it just hopes that we, ha that they get those resources to the families in Turkey and Syria soon so that they can start rebuilding and uh, returning towards a safe infra infrastructure to feel safe in their own homes. So that's all that we have for this week. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to King Flicks Picks, the show where we recommend to you some of the best movies to watch on King Flicks, Utah's streaming service. Um, with Oscars just right around the corner, we wanted to recommend to you some of the best Oscar nominated movies that are streaming on King Flicks. First up, we have Everything Everywhere All at Once, nominated in Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay, along with Best Actress for Michelle Yeoh and Best Supporting Actri Actor and Actress noms for Kiwi Kwan, Stephanie Tu, and Jamie Lee Curtis. In this film, an immigrant family is pulled into a multiversal adventure where tensions rise and wounds are healed. I thought this was one of the best movies to come out this past year. It's a true joy to watch. I'll take us into our next movie, 2022's Tar, written and directed by Todd Field. The title of the film itself is a play on the word art, and the film heavily comments on the relationship between our sense of humanity and the art we produce, and questions whether these two forces can be at odds with one another and what that conflict results in. In the film, successful composer Lydia Tarr, played by Kate Blanchett, enters a downward spiral as she is faced with intensifying conflict between her work, her personal life, and the blurring lines between the two. The cinematography, headed up by Florian Hofmeister, along with the production and sound design, serve to immerse the audience in Lydia's increasing sense of paranoia, isolation, and exhaustion as she's pushed to reckon with the consequences of her actions. My next recommendation is my favorite film of the past year, Jordan Peele's Nope. With only one nomination for Best Original Score, severely downplays the grandeur and excitement of this science fiction masterpiece. Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer play son and daughter who have inherited a stunt, a Hollywood stunt horse business from their father when he is mysteriously killed by falling debris. This mystery persists as they encounter more supernatural events on their large piece of land. No builds and builds leading to one of the most thrilling final 30 minutes I've ever seen. I really hope you give this exceptional film a go. My second Oscar nominated film to put in front of y'all is DC's The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz, and directed by Matt Reeves. The Batman was one of the most popular films of 2022, but I particularly want to draw audiences' critical attention to its cinematography from Greg Frazier. The visual style of the film was radical for a Hollywood blockbuster, with aggressively low aperture, obscure and cropped frames, and unpredictably placed angles, all making consistent appearances to keep the audience on their toes throughout the film's near three hour runtime. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to check back next week with some of our picks of some underrated and underseen films streaming on King Flicks. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.
to TUTV Senior Interviews. Today I am talking with David Stump. Okay, David, will you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in TUTV and what you've done over the years? Yeah, so yeah, I'm a senior and I'm a biology major. And yeah, my first year when I came here in 2019, I was like, yeah, biology, let's go, pre-med, all the way. <laughs> um, and then COVID hit and everything. And I realized that I had nothing to do. And then I was talking with my friend Wes at one point, and he was like, hey, you should come do TUTV with us. And I was like, you know what? Sure. So yeah, I came in fall 2020. I was a camera operator, and I went through the semester. I took a break spring of 2021 because I had a night class on Tuesdays. Uh, but then I got back into TUTV. I was the entertainment producer for a semester, then moved into senior field producer um, under Lily Hargett. And that's what I've been doing for the past year. So, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what has been um, either one of your favorite TUTV memories or proudest moments? Hmm. Either or. Okay. <laughs> I kind of have a tie for two of my favorite TU memories. Mm -hmm. um, probably my, my first thought was like running through the fountains during orientation because yes. it was just super awesome. My orientation group was like small. We had like seven people. Uh -huh. And so we all got to know each other. We're still all like super great friends. Aww. And it was a really great time. But the other greatest memory of TU that I have um, was actually last year at our like Friday Night Live live stream. Mm -hmm. It was my first live stream, live stream that I had helped like create and stuff. So I was really tired. We finished that. It was amazing. It was hilarious. And I went back to my apartment, which is in US West. And I got a text from my friends and they were saying, hey, you should come to the Spring Fest concert. And I was like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> and they were like, come anyways. And I was like, bet. So I ran from US West <laughs> over to um, to Reynolds Center and stuff just in time for them to start. And it was a fantastic concert. So it was well yeah. worth it. That's awesome. And I do anything for uh, Mr. Austin Moon himself, mm -hmm. Ross Lynch. Yes. So I'm glad you didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It turned out so much better than I thought it would be. So. <laughs> Okay, so you said you're a biology major, mm -hmm. and so you'll be graduating this spring. Mm -hmm. What are your future plans, aspirations? Yeah, so when I came into college, I originally wanted to do pre-med. I've since been like, no thanks. Fair. Um, so now I wanna go into more of like healthcare systems and advertising for those systems. Mm -hmm. um, I still really am passionate about healthcare and helping people, but yeah. I've realized that I really love working with people in a communications aspect. So. With my biology major, I'm hoping to be that bridge between like a patient and a doctor or a system and an advertising uh, agency uh, to kind of find the connection between like knowing and having the expertise in the background while also being able to produce something that would be uh, convincing people that they need to go to the hospital for something that maybe they didn't want to go for. So Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I It's really important to have like those jobs with people who are that go-between, mm -hmm. um, like helping to provide information. Yeah. Okay, so my last question for you is if you could punch any celebrity in the face, who would you pick? Oh, uh, James Corden. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why? Okay, okay, have you seen the video online of like him and the cast of the Cinderella movie with Camila Cabello? Um, and they do like a... The Swarm bad dance, Cinderella. And he's like, yeah, not yeah. the bad Cinderella, but it is the bad Cinderella. Yes, yes. Um, and he's like dressed as the mouse and they do, they swarm around this car in LA and he what? like starts like thrusting his hips in the mouse onesie. And it was just like, ever since that moment, I have just wanted to punch him. So yeah, <laughs> James Corden is the answer. Okay, that's a great answer. Wow. Well, thank you for speaking to me today, David. Uh, it was enlightening and great. And we will miss you so much next year. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Welcome back to TUTV, I'm Joe McCurdy. And I'm Glenn Gutierrez. We've got some exciting stories for you this week, so let's get into it. After starting the season red hot, Tulsa women's basketball has lost five of their last six games with their last two losses coming at the hands of SMU and Tulane. This is not a normal occurrence for the Lady Golden Hurricane, who has stayed consistent throughout their season so far, while only dropping a few games along the way. But since the conference schedule has started, this hasn't been the case. Only a few weeks ago, Tulsa was ranked number two overall in the American. Now they rank number six and have lost any conference momentum with their conference tournament right around the corner. With their next game coming against Wichita State, who Tulsa beat in their last meeting 70-63, to Tulsa will have to go through the Shockers in order to get their first win since February 1st.
Since their overtime win against Tulane back on the 21st of January, Tulsa men's basketball has yet to win a conference game, going 0-6 and losing by double-digit points in all six of this, those games. Uh, with Anthony uh, Pitchard, Tulsa's assistant and steals leader, uh, being out with an injury uh, definitely adds some issues to the flow of Tulsa's gameplay, but it hasn't been much going for the Tulsa Hurricanes uh, since then. Um, it's hard to think when the team goes from here uh, with the first year head coach uh, Eric Conkle being tasked to rally his team. There doesn't really seem to be much of a team to rally at this time. Uh, Tulsa will play USF this Wednesday before going on the road to play Temple in Philadelphia. The University of Tulsa men's tennis team picked up wins against Texas Tech and Oral Roberts Sunday in the Michael D. Case Tennis Center. The Golden Hurricane opened with a 4-2 win over Texas Tech and a 7-0 victory over ORU in the nightcap while winning its third straight match and improving to 4-2 on the year. Junior Vladimir Vakadorov of the University of Tulsa men's tennis team was named the American Athletic Conference Men's Tennis Player of the Week after his performance on Sunday. Tulsa will turn to action in 10 days to take on Arkansas and Fayetteville. Softball season started this weekend with Tulsa hosting their first tournament with Texas Tech and UT Arlington coming to town. On, on day one, Tulsa, last, uh, Tulsa lost three, lost eight to three against uh, Texas Tech on uh, day two. Tulsa beat T Tech, winning a close three to two game, but when, but then lost to UT Arlington three to four later that day. On the third day, and on the third and final day, Tulsa lost both games first to Texas Tech, twelve to one, and then to TU Arlington three to zero. Starting the season 1-4 to four isn't the best way to begin your season, but there is still a lot of seasons to come, so we'll just see how the Golden Hurricane bounces back. Uh, this week uh, is another three-day tournament featuring uh, Jacksonville State, Alcorn State, and Southern Mississippi. The Kansas City Chiefs won Super Bowl 57, defeating the Philadelphia Eagles 37-34 to after Chiefs, ki Chiefs kicker nailed a 27-yard field goal with only seconds remaining. In the long-awaited Battle of the Brothers, with brothers Travis and Jason Kelsey going against each other, saw younger brother Travis emerge victorious, titled one of the best tight ends of all time. Travis noted that this may be one of his last seasons in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl MVP for his performance, a performance that was clouded by the fact Mahomes seemed to have re-injured a high ankle sprain that he had been dealing with all postseason. Mahomes threw for 182 yards and three touchdowns while leading a double-digit comeback that resulted in the Chiefs' second championship in the last four years. So, the Super Bowl was a great affair. I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, it was unfortunate to see it way the end, and the way it ended with you know the holding penalty. Um, but what were, you th what were your thoughts? Did you enjoy it? I mean, I watched the Super Bowl to see the fans' reactions, so it was pretty funny to see uh, all the different stuff going on during the game, but gosh, that la last half was awesome. Yeah. It was great. So what are your predictions for next year? I know it's, you know, early, but <laughs> who's your team to win it? Oh, I just hope the Denver Broncos do better than they have in forever. <laughs> That's a good point. I, don't know. I, I think my sleeper pick is going to be Jacksonville. Ooh, very so nice. We'll see. <laughs> well, good luck to them. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Bye. Let's take a quick look at some upcoming TU events. In the 21st century, machines are learning to write essays, diagnose disease, create visual art, and even write code. As our lives are increasingly guided by artificial intelligence, what are the implications for the humanities? The Oklahoma Center for the Humanities will be hosting Professor Blaine Greekman Wednesday, February 22nd at the Zara Center to explore human agency, academic freedom, and truth in the age of the machine. But if art and cake are more your style, the TU School of Art, Design, and Art History is celebrating Alexandra Hoag's 125th birthday in the Hoag Gallery. Come listen to the J. Donald Fegan Distinguished Artist, Olivia Hoag Marino, and join the student-led celebration of Hoag's life, work, and legacy. Keep watching TU TV for more TU events.
Welcome back to TUTV. I'm Joe McCurdy. And I'm David Stump. We have some awesome entertainment stories for you, so let's head right in. After Adrian Curry, an American's next top model, said that Melaine Linsky's body did not fit her character in the video game adaptation, adaptation of The Last of Us, the actress finally responded to her naysayers' negatively, negative remarks related to this topic. Linsky called out Curry for using a photo that was not at all related to her on the, sh on the show. She said, quote, I'm playing a person who meticulously planned and executed an overthrow of FDRA. I'm supposed to be smart, ma'am. I don't need to be musk muskly. That's what henchmen are for, end quote. Shortly after, she praised the series co-creators Craig Mazin and Neil Dirkman for creating a great character who has become a leader due to other admiral qualities. Jeffrey Pierce, her co-star in The Last of Us, also supported her overbody image critics. Tickets for the Disney's Lion King went on sale on Monday, February 13th. This Disney theatrical creation's touring production is presented in Tulsa by Celebrity Attractions. Tickets prices range from $30 to $135, with a select number of VIP seats available from $125 to $155. Tickets can be purchased in person at the Tulsa PAC ticket office, by call, and online on their website. Harry Styles had a successful night at UK's Brit Awards, winning four awards including Album of the Year, Styles took the Album of the Year trophy just less than a week after winning the same category at the Grammys Awards. More impressively, he also won the Pop R&B Act, Song of the Year, as it was, and Artist of the Year awards, along with Harry Styles. Female-led indie rock band West Leg took trophies for Group of the Year and Best New Artist. Beyonce also successfully won two Brits, International Artist of the Year and International Song of the Year, for Break My Soul. Breaking Bad is the iconic series described by Aaron Paul, the star of the series, as, quote, one of those gifts that just keeps on giving, end quote. Following up with its popularity, the chip company Popcorners released an ad inspired by this series with the presence of Aaron Paul and the former co-star Brian Cranston. The ad was aired during the Super Bowl 2023. Paul said, quote, the team's back and pushing a more viable legal product this time. It's an embarrassment of riches. It's so hard to get a job in this industry, and then to get one that you really love, but one that just keeps on giving back." End quote. Breaking Bad, which aired on AMC for five seasons, is available to watch on Netflix. Rihanna is set to shine bright like a diamond in the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show after eight months she welcomed her first baby. She revealed that although she's gotten the call to grace the stage during the big game before motherhood was le what led her to accept this invitation, Rihanna explained, quote, when you become a mom, there's just something that just happens where you feel like you can take on the world. You can do anything, and the Super Bowl is one of the biggest stages in the world, end quote. Her excitement took center stage as Rihanna also emphasized her passion for the performance this year. She said, quote, it's important for representation. It's important for my son to see that, end quote. So how about that performance? I what thought, did you think? Okay, it wasn't the best Super Bowl performance we've ever had. But it was, I say, pretty good for yeah. what it was. For Rihanna, I think her return to music, as everybody has been saying, it was a good start. And I'm excited to see where she goes after it. I thought, you know, when, when it first popped up on my screen mm -hmm. and she was floating on this, like, you know, tier, I thought we were in a Super Smash Bros. <laughs> map. And I was like, what is going on? Um, and I was, I was kind of expecting somebody else to, like, go and join her, like mm -hmm. Jay-Z yeah. uh, or, or Aesop Rocky, her, uh, mm -hmm. I think, boyfriend or mm -hmm. husband, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think it was, you know, mid to high, but there's definitely been better Super Bowl yeah. perform performances. What's also really cool, though, is that, like, she didn't accept payment for the performance exactly. either. Like, it was all just for, like, getting her name out there. And she got, like, what, 1.5 million new followers to her Instagram account? And, and, like, I don't know, her... her, her Makeup brand Fenty Beauty is mm -hmm. up like 800 percent. Yeah, it's just you know that's how you do branding. Exactly. So that's how you do it. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Happy Valentine's Day. Red Russian! Red Russian! What? What is it, Goldie? Where's Ranger? Ranger! Ranger?
Oh, you mean campus security. Everything all right, President Carson? <laughs> Ro, Ranger! Oh, danger? Why didn't you say something earlier? <laughs> There's rash everywhere! Oh, well, if the students have a rash, they should probably go to the Hurricane Health Center. <laughs> ro, ro, ro! Rash! Trash? Well, we need to keep this campus clean, so let's go! Look, Rad! It's a banana peel! What kind of man would do this? Rad! Rad! There's rash everywhere! <laughs> no! We should clean this up. re rid it, Rad! Time to celebrate! In today's episode, Brad Carson and Goldie learn the importance of keeping our campus clean, so remember to always throw away your trash. This message was sponsored by TUTV. Hey guys, welcome back! <laughs> welcome back guys. So obviously you heard all about Rihanna's performance at the Super Bowl. Um, did you watch or...? I did not watch this year. All I saw was, I saw the outfits. I saw Rihanna's outfit mm -hmm. and she looked stunning. She looked mm -hmm. so good. And I loved that she had the whole baby bump on display. Yes. That was great. Um, and the backup dancers, the outfits were very interesting. They were very puffy. They've been, they've they were, been referred to, to now me. as the marshmallows. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> heard this, but um, a lot of them are coming up on my TikTok and they're just explaining that, you know, they got to keep the outfits. Yeah, and everyone's I saw like, that. When they're talking about the dancers, they're like, oh, yeah, the marshmallows looked so, so good. <laughs> like, just love how we're all collectively just referring to them as that, <laughs> as that now. But I just think, honestly, I know David has his opinions on this performance, <laughs> but as a businesswoman, that was a very, very smart move from her because she stopped like mid-performance to like touch up her makeup with her makeup brand and Great. everything was just like branded from the get-go. And I just think it, it's a very smart move. Um, business-wise from that her is smart. so yeah and I agree I like the pregnancy announcement that I, at first I was getting ready to defend anyone who was like she looks a little bit like you know because people just assume yes this. I thought she'd given birth like two months ago but it's been like 10 apparently well, it's her second kid yeah but I thought it was like that was postpartum the, I thought the same thing so I was like was maybe maybe she got pregnant like not that long ago well, and I'm crazy but yeah no his it's name is ASAP Rocky so <laughs> <laughs> anyway sorry moving swiftly on did you watch any so you said you didn't watch any of the game no I didn't watch any of it uh, were there any ads that you thought were particularly good or weird mm. or bad well as a Breaking Bad fan I did enjoy that ad very much there was also a was it Toomey ad or um that basically had a lot of people scrambling for the remote because they basically made it look like you'd exited out of the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of videos of people <laughs> filming their boyfriends going, why on earth have you stopped playing the Super Bowl? Like they were getting really stressed uh -huh. and it's actually an ad, which I think is really clever. That's um, funny. Other than that, I not really yeah. crazy memorable ones. Lots of, oh, the J-Lo and Ben Affleck, is that his name? Yeah. The, yeah, that was a funny one too. Um, I just... I don't know. I was just looking forward to Rihanna, and then after that, I sort of zoned out a yeah, little bit. Yeah, that's usually about all I ever catch is halftime. I did. My upstairs neighbors, though, they were disappointed and screaming for about an hour, so I had to yell oh, at them a bit. I'm sorry other about than that. that. <laughs> other <laughs> it was than a that, great Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday for me. <laughs> well, yes. Hopefully, hopefully it's a little less controversial next year. I guess with that like <laughs> big ending. But anyway, that's all we have time for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.